In today's video I will show you the MR anatomy of the plantar plate of the great toe. In the past I was somewhat struggling with the MR anatomy of the great toe and the plantar plate, mainly because it was never a common exam where I was working. It might be quite different in other countries though. The whole turf toe pathology just seems to be more of an American entity as it is frequently seen in American football players playing on hard artificial turf which is a little harder than the very soft greens we encounter in Switzerland. So when you start out with MSK and you have a great toe and the query is plantar plate tear, typically you just deal with the plantar plate as like one structure, at least I did in the beginning, and it's a little bit more tricky than that. So the plantar plate complex, it's a collection of different structures that are all supporting the plantar aspect of the great toe joint or the metatarsophalangeal joint and it's helping to um, distribute forces etc but I'm not going into the biomechanics here but it's not just like one structure I think that's very important to understand and that's also uh, the goal to show you today that you should technically should be able to really call these different structures out and say where the pathology actually is. So Let's start off here with the intersesamoid ligament. It's basically just connecting the two sesamoid bones. Very easy to see on especially short axis uh, views. We will see that later. And this is one part that can get injured. It's not frequently the case. But let's move on to the probably most important structure. And these are the sesamoid phalangeal ligaments. So you have the sesamoid on the medial side, lateral side. And from the distal pole of both sesamoids, there is one ligament or, well, it's an enforcement of the plantar plate or a thickening, a focal thickening rather, and not like a proper ligament, from the distal pole down to the plantar base of the proximal phalanx. So that's the sesamoid phalangeal ligament like this. And you've got one on the other side as well. In addition to that, you have accessory sesamoid ligaments. Sometimes they are also called metatarsosesamoid ligaments or suspensory ligaments which are going from the medial and lateral aspect of the head of the metatarsal, of the first metatarsal bone, down to the lateral aspect of the sesamoid. And therefore helping in uh, holding this complex structure together in place and helping with the distribution of the forces during uh, sports activity or just normal walking. Then you've got also the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament, which we will not really cover today, but just for you to see where they actually are. Now, the plantar plate uh, is basically all of this, like in, in one, like it's a collection of different things. And maybe just one additional thing here between this kind of sesamoid phalangeal ligaments, there is this fibrocartilaginous path. And if you have a sagittal view and you are just in the section between the sesamoid bones, you can see this very like thin, sometimes a little bit brighter structure between the bone or the joint and the flexor hallucis longus tendon. And this is technically what you understand of the plantar plate on the lesser toes, for example. We will see that later, but it is just one part of the plantar plate and not the full story. Then, as I said, there is the flexor hallucis longus tendon going down here. We have the flexor hallucis brevis with the two insertions here on the corresponding sesamoid bones. On the medial aspect, we have the abductor hallucis, which is also blending in with all the structures, especially here at the lateral uh, medial base of the proximal phalanx. And there are some also fibers to the other structures, joint capsule and sesamoids, etc. Here. On the lateral aspect, we have basically the adductor hallucis muscles with the transfer head and the oblique head. But again, I will not really cover these muscular structures today. It's really more about the ligamentous stuff here. So I think this is now a very important image. It's a sagittal view basically from the medial side, and it should give a little bit more understanding for these different ligaments. Again, sesamoid, this would be now the medial sesamoid. We've got the flexor hallucis brevis inserting there. And you can, you can now see from the head of the first metatarsal bone, we have, first of all, the medial collateral ligament, which is running not like straight, it's a little bit oblique, similar to the thumb. Uh, I have a video about the, that kind of uh, stuff there, so you can go check it out, especially in the, at the, yeah, it's the metacarpal phalangeal joint. It's a similar analogy here. And this is now the accessory sesamoid ligament, which is a little bit like 
triangular shape. Sometimes it's uh, shown a little bit different in shape. You can go straight down to the sesamoid, but it's just like uh, blending in here with the sesamoid and is connecting the sesamoids with the head, basically. And you have got one on the lateral aspect as well. Overlaying here on the medial aspect is the abductor helices tendon. And as I said already, the sesamoid phalangeal ligament from the distal pole of the sesamoid down to the plantar base of the proximal phalanx is a very important structure. Again, sometimes called the, the dark blue one metatarsal sesamoid ligament. Okay, this is now the short axis view and uh, for me this is now considered to be an axial view, sometimes it's called a coronal view. So make up your mind, for me it's short axis and axial view now. Basically what we've got here is just the bony structures. This is the head of the first metatarsal bone. We've got the two sesamoids. We have the intersesamoid ligament here connecting the two. We've got the flexor helices longus tendon down here. And then on either side we have these suspensory ligaments or the metatarsal sesamoid ligaments or like this also uh, accessory collateral ligaments, which you can nicely see on MR as we will see later. Well. This is now the greater toe. We have the medial aspect here. We have the lateral aspect here. So this is the medial sesamoid. I think that's the best uh, region to start. If you now scroll laterally, at some point you don't see any sesamoid anymore. Basically this is now at the intersesamoid ligament. We have the intersesamoid ligament here. Now we know that below the intersesamoid ligament is the flexor helices longus tendon, as you can see here partially. It's a little bit off center, but it's the flexor helices longus tendon. Now between the flexor helices longus tendon and the joint itself, there is this fibrocartilages pad that I was talking about. And you can see this here as this black structure, then it's a little bit high signal down here, but basically you don't have the tendon in the joint here. So basically you have this kind of pad here. And if you go now to, for example, the second the second uh, toe, toe, for example, here, this reflects basically the same, the normal plantar plate from the lesser toe as you uh, know it probably better than the greater toe. But here it's a little bit different. This is just one part of it. Okay, so sometimes you have this kind of recess here, which is normal if it's not too wide, if it's not going all the way down, for example, here. So if you have just a little fluid here between this kind of heterogeneous pad, fibrocartilage pad and the base here. So this recess is normal and it's not a tear of the plantar plate. Very important. Sometimes this gets, uh, people get this wrong. Now moving back to the medial side here for a second here. So what we are now trying to see is basically the sesamophalangeal ligament, which should go somewhere along here. It's probably not really a nice example because uh, yeah, the image quality is not so great, but normally you have some black ligament going all the way up here and you should have a similar structure on the lateral aspect. We can now see on the lateral sesamoid there is kind of a ligament. So this is still the edge of the proximal phalanx and there is a ligament like structure going up here. So these are the sesamophalangeal ligaments. It's always important also to have a look at this kind of axial views or a short axis or coronal, whatever you want to call them. And here we can see the sesamoids again. We can nicely see the flexor helices tendon here. And there is the intersesamoid ligament, which is a little bit brighter here on this T1-weighted sequence. And then you can now see kind of this accessory collateral ligaments or suspensory ligaments here on both sides. They can get injured here too. Let me just pull in uh, this one here. This is now T1 after gadolinium administration. And we can see also this kind of ligaments, how they connect the head of the metatarsal bone down to the sesamoids here. And the intersesamoid ligament in between here and the flexor helices longus tendon. Sometimes if you use this kind of axial and you are now scrolling distally, for example, you can somewhat appreciate that there is a thicker structure or ligament-like structure that's connecting the sesamoid with the proximal phalangeal base. So you can use this to really uh, train your eye where to look at if you now switch over to the sagittal. So that's it for this week. I hope you found the video helpful. And next time you remember all these structures if you see an MRI of the greater toe. And with that, thanks for watching and see you next time.